Hello from San Antonio. I'm Lily Gonzalez. I'm the executive director of the San Antonio Book Festival, and I'm so pumped to welcome you to this special Lit Crawl event, Notes from the Bathroom Line. I don't know about y'all, but I am ready to laugh. I have my cocktail from our friends at Desert Door from earlier, maybe my second cocktail. We are wrapping up the first day of the book festival. And I know that some of you here in San Antonio are having backyard watch parties. So cheers, everybody, cheers. Oh uh, today we're talking about this kick-ass book that's filled with humor from really funny women. And I've been listening to these ladies backstage and it got me thinking about the funny women in my life, you know, my best friends and thinking about my friends got me thinking about the most sacred of spaces, the group chat. So <laughs> I just wanted to say if anything got me through this year, I don't know about you all, but it was the group chat and I just wanna make a toast. There's gonna be a lot of toasting <laughs> to the holiness of the group chat. <laughs> Uh, don't forget Here. to click on that buy the books button below so that you can get a copy of this book from Nowhere Bookshop, our official bookseller, which is also owned and operated by really funny women. We've got three of the contributors with us tonight. Catherine Cohen is a native of Houston, Texas. She co-hosts the popular podcast about dating, boys and sex. Seek Treatment. She has been featured <laughs> in the New York Times, Vogue and the Village Voice. Her many film and TV credits include a role in The Lovebirds and season three of High Maintenance on HBO. She's also the author of God I Feel Modern Tonight, Poems from a Gal About Town. Tian Tran is an LA-based comedian, actor, and writer. Her stand-up has been featured at the Just for Laughs Festival in Montreal as part of the 2019 New Faces of Comedy Showcase. She's written for Showtime's work in progress and is a co-host of Crooked Media's Hysteria podcast. Samantha Irby couldn't be with us. We wish her a speedy recovery, but we have Rachel Winitsky, who's an, who's an actor and writer in LA. She was a sketch writer on The Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Fallon, and has also written for Saturday Night Live. Reductress and is the head writer of the Story Pirates podcast. She's one half of the comedy folk duo, Friends Who Folk, and has been on yes. the television, which is pretty cool if you think about it. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> behind this book is Amy Solomon, who will be moderating tonight's discussion. Amy is a film and TV producer, most recently on HBO's Barry in Silicon Valley. She's originally from Chicago, but now lives in Los Angeles with her dogs, Nan and Goose, who are perfect. She is the editor yeah. of Notes from the Bathroom Line, Humor, Art, and Low Grade Panic from 150 of the Funniest Women in Comedy. She's a graduate of something called Princeton University. She loves baseball <laughs> and her friends' kids. Enjoy the program, everybody. Here's Amy, Kat, Sam. Oh, here's Amy, Kat, Rachel, and Tien. Thank you, Lily. Oh my God. That was amazing. There's really nothing worse than listening to your own bio at you. <laughs> like it's like <laughs> nice, but really? also horrible. <laughs> that was, sounds cool. <laughs> Um, okay. Beautiful, beautiful. What did you say? This is okay. Already, we're gonna have to. We're gonna talk. Over, it's gonna be weird, but it's fine. Yes, there is a delay. That's very awkward. <laughs> yes, and I, I feel think so. It's a, it's a, I think it's a four-way delay. Like I think we're you know, <laughs> hitting it in different ways. <laughs> It's a 40. Woo! What's everyone's okay. biggest fear? <laughs> <laughs> Amy, should we tell them about our favorite? Okay. What? Should we tell everyone about our, fa uh, our favorite game? Oh, we can. Well, I actually like legitimately wrote questions, but we should tell them our favorite game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amy, okay. Amy. Okay, let's let's just say this book, Notes from the Bathroom Line, it has 150 of the funniest women in comedy in it. These are three of them. I'm obsessed with them. You can get the book. To, if we're being honest, I'm tired of talking about the book. It came out a few weeks ago, and I feel like a broken record. So I wanted <laughs> to talk more just about, like, I don't know. I have a bunch of questions about creative process. They're fun questions. That makes it sound like they're really boring. Um, we, we can... We'll do that question later. I think we need to break the ice before we say our favorite game. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Okay. I heard this question asked once, and I thought it was so smart. You guys have read Otessa Moshvig, who wrote Re My Year of Rest and Relaxation. This moderator asked her, when you're writing and you, like, really are like, oh, I, I'm in it, I'm, like, in the zone, is there a place in your body where you feel it? So I wanted to know, like, if you're on stage and you're, like, having a good set or you're writing or, like, anything, is there, like, a place like a physical place you like feel that you just got me really hyped up <laughs> that, In a good gets way? Me, that gets me excited <laughs> that makes me feel alive I feel ooh in my chest my gut and I go my hands tingle and I'm like okay I'm when I when I feel like that, I'm like, oh, I was meant to be alive. Because when I'm not like that, I'm like, why am I here? Yeah. Yeah, I would say right, writing. I don't. I writing. I don't write long enough in a uh, concentrated <laughs> effort to to find that yeah. body spot that you're talking about. I think I like write a sentence and then reward myself with you know endless other things, but. When it comes to performing, it's in my shoulders. Like as mm. soon as my shoulders start loosening up, it, like I know that I'm in the zone. Otherwise, I'm like very stiff, lifeless. Some would say boring. Um, and <laughs> Never. <laughs> when when I'm feeling good, it's it's all in it's all in the shoulders for me. I love that. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like with performing, I'm such a nervous performer. Like I get really bad stage fright. So for me, it's like if I'm in the zone, I just feel normal. Like. I reach a point where I'm like, oh, I feel normal and I can like breathe and behave like a normal human being. But for writing, I feel like it's like if it's really good, I keep turning around because I hear my dog like is being, do you see that? <laughs> it's so cute. It's like my I friend Julia, who is watching, was like, we need to see Bagel tonight. So this is satisfying her. <laughs> because she's trying to dig a hole through the wall to escape. Right? Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> writing I'm in the zone with writing, it makes me feel like nervous. Like when it's, when I realize that it's going well, I suddenly get nervous, like butterflies in my stomach, like, oh no, did something good come out of my head? And then it makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay. So, is there okay so like tn said Catherine and i talked about this constantly about how it's literally impossible to write there's just simply no way to do it um is there what what is besides social media what is the app that is your biggest issue like mine i talked to rachel about this a lot but i go on offer up and start hunt for furniture so do you have an app that is your biggest issue oh like a time stop oh what like a time suck yeah, yeah yeah like what's your what's like what's your procrastinator besides like instagram twitter the new york times maybe you're better than me and it's not on your phone new york times <laughs> i can't get enough of the news um mine is obvious <laughs> i'm addicted to looking at apartments it takes over my life it takes over my dreams oh my i'm not even yes. pretty easy yeah, I was going to say I have I have two. One is like Zillow, apartments.com, <laughs> hot pads, all, all the hot all the hot apartment sites. And I'm a bit <laughs> of a sports nerd and I spent a lot of the beginning of the quote. I'm a jock. I don't know if people know this. But I'm a bit of a jock. <laughs> and I looked at like soccer cleats almost every day trying to figure <laughs> out which ones to buy for like the first six months of the quarantine and I bought those are the those are my pandemic purchases were two pairs are of you satisfied cookies. oh I'm so happy I'm so happy I'm so happy <laughs> I play I played by myself today and two high schoolers thought I was a high schooler <laughs> amazing <laughs> they came up to me and they were like hey are you hey are you like you want to play with us how old are you and I was like I'm 33 and he goes oh my god I'm so sorry that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy to be crazy. that's crazy it's, oh my god crazy. that's amazing um yeah. what did, did did you say your, the new york times was that your real answer rachel because that's so chic 
No, I've never read a newspaper. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know. I honestly spend a lot of time Googling stuff. Like, I don't think there's one place, but like, I spend a lot of time on Google, like, um, thinking about things that could go wrong in my life or like with my physical <laughs> form or like my dog and then Googling like that, like, like small freckled death or like, haircut <laughs> death or like roller coaster death like just trying to figure out all the ways that i could die and so that <laughs> small have freckled death. Death. <laughs> you never know i love watching the time lapse videos of people making food like on the buzzfeed tasty app i mean it's heaven mm -hmm. absolutely do you make have i like you ever that made one of them yeah I made, uh, say it with me, the at-home version of Taco Bell's Crunchwrap Supreme. <laughs> How was it? it was really good. Incredible. Yeah, of course. How we made, made the TikTok pasta. TikTok pasta. Ooh, How was yeah. that? Fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Anything that you, like, slather in feta is good, you know? All what videos are like and guys this is the best thing you've ever had <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's, it's totally it's very odd the tone i'm like what tone is this i know it's uh yeah it's disconcerting um okay oh by the way if people want to ask questions we'll do q a at the end so you can put them in the chat or i think there's a q a thing whatever you do you um okay Okay, when you want to talk about something personal on stage or in a song or whatever it is, does that make you, like if it's a story about your partner or your parents or whatever, do, do you still like worry about that or do you just like go for it and or do you, and do you ever warn people like or ask if it's okay? Like how is your relationship to talking about like life stuff? Sometimes it's hard to know. It's like, did I ask a bad question or are we on a four-way delay, you know? <laughs> on a it's like everyone, it's like that game. It's the game where you like, where everyone has to count to 30 as a group. And I feel like we're all like, um, I, I feel like I don't, I don't do a ton of like super personal stuff on stage. But when I have, it's always been completely spur of the moment and shocked everyone, including myself. And it, but it was usually stuff that was like at my expense like it's rare that I've I've pretty much only humiliated myself with a personal story that went too far and not other people and I think that if I was to like write material that was about other people I might consult them or like hide it so that they would never know that it was about them <laughs> I'd be really worried about it yeah yeah I would say I'm I'm in the same boat as well I think I try to write from a place that like I'm the one that is being humiliated, um, unless you're like, it's Kat, Kat and Amy saw this story last time, unless you're like some shitty dude named Patrick that tried to make out with me <laughs> while Palooza, I will mess any single day. Um, but I, with parents stuff, I think you brought up parents and I kind of refuse to ever make fun of my parents on on stage just because I think Personally, like I think growing up, seeing a lot of like Asian comedians make fun of their parents, making their parents like the butt of jokes was very hard to watch. And I want to try to never do that, um, especially yeah. like, you know, in this time and also just in general. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I think it's really refreshing to see comedians who are like, I love my family. It's like, you never see that. <laughs> um, can I be gross on this? Can you be gross? Yeah. Because I've definitely said the sentence like, can I write a poem about, about how we did anal? And my boyfriend's like, okay. <laughs> that's like, that's a, hu a huge part. Of it. A huge part. Not Has quality. he ever said no? Um, I may, no, I can't, there was, there's nothing that I would ask. There are things that I would maybe not include, but I, I feel like I have a good sense of what is like between us. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. He's he's so game, though. It's pretty great. He is from <laughs> heaven above. If he ever leaves me, I will die. Just kidding. I'm independent <laughs> and fierce. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Who is your, besides each other, who is your favorite woman in comedy right now to watch or like, you could say a couple. Oh. My, um, my favorite is Grace Kuhlenschmidt, who oh, is so funny. Is all over TikTok, all over Instagram. She's so, so fun. I think everything she puts out makes me laugh, and I can watch it over and over. She's incredible. Such a unique so funny. voice, too. Like, mm -hmm. there, I, there's just like that. Oh, this is, a, I'm so bad at answering this question. I feel like Karen Chi is someone who, like, every time I see her do anything, she, like, brings me great joy. Like, mm -hmm. there are lots of people that are, like, super funny who I love who, like, maybe wouldn't immediately put me in a good, good mood. But, like, Karen is just a joy, and I miss watching her do stand-up. Yeah. Um, there's so many. There's so many good people. It's, like, so hard. I know, I know. It's, and I'm <laughs> I know. I'm thinking, I think there's like three that for, that immediately come to mind of people who like, when I've seen them on stage, I'm like in tears. Meg Stalter. Mm -hmm. I just froze. That's okay. I can hear you. You're okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, I think I froze. But my, I was Meg Stalter. Um, Naomi Ekpergen. Oh my gosh. And, Naomi. and uh, Michelle Collins makes me like die laughing. <laughs> funny i don't you feel like maybe everyone's always felt this way i mean it's part of the reason i did the book but like the 150 doesn't even like capture nearly everyone i can't it's like i just feel like there's so many funny women around us at all times like i feel so lucky about it all the time we're blessed yeah yeah we really um, are yeah, I love all of them. Did you see Naomi's thing today about getting the, she got her second vaccine? She said she <laughs> put, posted some video. That's the kind of person where, like, whenever I'm, like, watching a story of Naomi's, like, Greg will, like, sprint over to go, like, watch it with me. That's <laughs> the best. <laughs> um, who is the funniest person in your life who's not a comedian? One, two, three, my dad. Yeah. <laughs> he knows my dad very well and he is the, the he's there's there's no one funnier it's 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 a, so, so weird it, it doesn't even make sense the things he said <laughs> kills me how would you how would you like describe his sense of humor i mean he just like walks he would come home from work and be like How's the most perfect family in the world doing? <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be like, you're so lucky that you're with me, this dad ever. <laughs> <laughs> He's unbelievable. Um, oh. Did you know that your whole life? Like, when you were you, like, always, like, my dad's funny, or is it something you've come to appreciate later? No, I was always like, my dad's, I'd rather hang out with my dad than anyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's lucky. <laughs> That's so good. You guys? I would say my mom is like very, very funny. She's like very small. She's like four foot 11, 10, and like very, very quiet for the most part. But every now and then she has like really insane potty humor. Um, <laughs> and we'll like, <laughs> when we were kids or even now when we're home, like she'll walk up to us, make a little finger gun put it on our shoulder and then fart and then walk away. And that's <laughs> my, <laughs> no, nothing, just no prefacing, nothing afterwards. <laughs> I think it's the <laughs> funniest thing. It makes me laugh every single time. It makes um, me laugh. And her timing is, her timing is impeccable. You never, the gun <laughs> and the fart line up perfectly. It's never out of sync. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. The finger gun is so specific, too. What a choice. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, does she, does she, like, think she's funny? Like, do you think that's something she would identify yeah, I herself mean, as? 
Okay. I mean, I think she, I, she has such a dry sense of humor and I know she's like, no, I think she thinks she's, I bet she, if you asked her, she probably thinks she's hilarious, but like she would never <laughs> be the one to say that. <laughs> yeah. Cause some people who are like quiet, funny, don't, wouldn't say they are. Do you know what I mean? Like, which is I was so charming to me. Yeah. Someone who really is, but it's actually, they don't really like identify that way. I don't know. Yeah, there's a big, I feel like actually that actually feels my, so I, my dad passed away when I was in college, brag, um, but he was definitely the funniest person, like funniest non-comedy person that was like formative to my upbringing. And he was very, like, he knew he was funny, but he, he wasn't like cocky funny. And I feel like that was all like, whatever daddy issues I've had about like, wanting to like date men that were funny like they always ended up being really cocky and I was like no thank you mm -hmm. and there is something about like people who are not professional funny people who are very funny but don't like uh peacock about yeah. it that's like it's like a perfect combination of human yeah totally my friend Joel's mom and Catherine knows Joel she's like really sweet she's like uh pediatrician she's not like she's funny but it's not like her like thing you know and this one time we were in the car and we were already like giggly for so joel and i for some reason we we're like you know when you're like in the back and someone's parent is driving you but like you're an adult and it feels like you're like <laughs> why i don't know why that's so funny but we were so giggly we were at joel's like we we're the day before his brother's wedding and um there was someone walking with just like this crazy overstuffed shopping cart like they bought like so much shit and it was in these bags and out of nowhere joel's mom goes whoa that's a big baby <laughs> like, <laughs> like roller and we laughed for like an hour and a half like i don't we could not stop but someone like that who's just like someone's parent who just like let the little thing slip it's like the funniest thing in the world <laughs> also rachel and i are like less than a mile apart and it's like pitch black at my house and like Rachel's it's like light outside yeah the sun just came up definitely a weird lag on the zoom yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like a time space continuum lag okay what is something that you've read or seen like tv or book or movie or whatever that you were like fuck I wish I made that like that should have been me Oh, wait, I just watched all of what we do in the shadows, the TV show, and it was the most of recent memory. I, should... <laughs> I thought I should have made the show and I should have made this movie years, years ago. <laughs> yeah, I should have been. I, so that show is awesome. It's so good. It's so There's good. a bunch of gals in the book who wrote on it. Sarah Naftalis, Shana Goad. And I'm sure the women best. have been on it too, but those are the those are the two uh, I can think of right now. I'm gonna go wait outside um, their houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that's a good one. Does it make you feel inspired or frustrated? For me, it's both. Like I, mm -hmm. I'm like inspired because I'm like, oh, people are making the types of things that I love and that are. Like for that specifically, it's like, oh, it's so weird and silly and goofy. And I love that silly, goofy stuff gets made and that people spend money on it. And it also makes me feel sick and disgusted. <laughs> <because> <laughs> <laughs> um, and so there is definitely a fire within me that's burning um, out of anger, but also out of love. <laughs> I'm overselling this show. That's the hat. That's so no, it's so good. It's such. A I think I know Catherine's answer. What are you gonna say, Francis Ha? Yeah, I was thinking that right away. Well, I my thought was like the things I like are like. I, I get that jealous anger because the plot is nothing fancy or even interesting, but the way it's done is just so like life changing, and I'm like, oh, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. Francis Ha's like my favorite movie. I'm just like, 
why is that so good when like nothing even happens? There's literally no plot besides like Glive. That's my shit. I know. Mm-hmm. What's yeah. your answer, Amy? Um, I wait. T- let Tan go because I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, me. Okay, I'll go. Um, I just finished watching Staff Let's Flats. Um, <sighs> and it's so funny, and it does give me like it's like fr- like so enjoyable, but also very rageful because I'm like. This is brilliant. Like shopping for apartments and like being a leasing agent. It's like a joke machine. Like it's how come has no one done this before? Um, and it's so, so funny. It's on HBO Max. People keep, if anyone's interested. People keep bringing that up. I need to watch that. Also, it sounds amazing. his it's sister so... is the one who's in What We Do in the Shadow. Oh my gosh, And yes. the fact that and she's we took her is crazy. Too much talent in a family. <laughs> yeah, I actually hate successful families. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't like to see it in the sibling relationship. <laughs> um, I, I think mine is, is um, Pen15. I just think it's perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like every, every moment. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and my friend Sam created it and directed a ton of them, and I constantly am asking him the most detailed questions, and I think it's getting grading <laughs> eventually. <laughs> I'm like, so what was the casting process for this 12 year old girl? He's like, please, <laughs> enough. <laughs> it's, so good. it's so good. Yeah, the, um, the casting of like the, okay. the teenage heartthrobs blows my mind because I'm like, <laughs> those kids are 100 percent. That's exactly who I'm thinking of yeah. when I think about the, the teen heartthrobs. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> also, OK, who is the evil girl in season two who like wiggles into their friendship? <laughs> sure. I saw it. I forget her name, but she's unbelievable. And there, I saw a tweet the other day that was like king like king kong and godzilla couldn't stand the chance like against that <laughs> so good. Not, nothing funnier than describing a tweet but there you go um <laughs> okay um well okay i want to ask about some individual things for a moment okay so Catherine, i have everyone's books here oh um the cool whatever Whenever I go to, I love to go to bookstores to see if they have notes from the bathroom line. And then I go to visit Catherine's and I've bought it from every Barnes and Noble from the Southern California area. Yeah, he is, is the greatest, most generous, thoughtful friend you could ever have in your life. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. She gives, um, she gives, she gives. She gives. <laughs> who is, this is for everyone, but I wanted to know with the book too, like who is your first most trusted What's reader? What's your favorite part of my book? <laughs> but like with with like <laughs> like if you're okay with your different stuff like if you're gonna try out a joke or like try out a song or whatever who's your like the person who you're gonna send it to to read that you trust them and you're not too scared like who's your first reader or listener or whatever you I send you almost everything well yeah I met Even- someone else <laughs> Like, but even like literally like Instagram captions, I'm like, is this funny? Yeah. <laughs> Someone else, my friend, our friend Halcyon person. Oh yeah, that's a good uh, one. She's in the book too. She's in notes from the bathroom line. In the book, she's written for lots of uh, children's TV shows. She's now working on a show, executive produced by Ludacris. I can't remember what it's called, but it sounds really cool. Uh, she's hey. the best. Oh, I didn't know that. Um. Tian, who's yours? Do you do you send? Does your partner read your stuff or like listen or whatever? Um, we have like a very it's like it's a toxic cycle only because of my insecurities. But I like <laughs> will ask her to listen to my stuff, and I want her opinion. But then when she gives it, I'm like, but I'm sensitive. <laughs> um and then we go through that cycle but it she really has helped me punch up all of my jokes and all of my like all of my writing um she she is the one that I go to for for airing out some things 
I just I have to be better about not being a diva about it though. I really I'm like, what about this? And she's like, well maybe. <laughs> it's so hard. Stronger. It's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Rachel. Um, I do the exact same thing. I I run everything by my husband, and then if he tells me he doesn't like something, I'll be like, I'll get mad at him. <laughs> but, but I do trust him, and he's also very nice. Like, if he likes something, he'll be like, that I love that. Like, that's great. Best thing you've ever written. And if he doesn't like something, he'll go, it's not my fave. <laughs> that's <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> he's he's so funny in his own right. He's very funny. So when he says, you know, it's not my fave, I'll be like, well, why isn't it your fave? <laughs> yeah, and don't we all right together. Well, yeah, wait. That? So that's what I want to ask. That's what I want to ask. So Rachel and David wrote this amazing. They're writing this series of children's <laughs> books. I have the first one here. Oh, good, good dogs on a bad day. Uh, I got it from Skylight Books. You can go to Skylight to get your copy if you're in L.A. Um, but how was writing? To, had you ever written something like I mean, a book is like you've probably written together before, but like a book is like for real. We had re- a book is for real. That's what they say. We had written a <laughs> pilot. <laughs> we wrote a pilot together, which was like more in both of our wheelhouses. And uh, we've since written other like TV stuff together. But the book was the book was like weirdly easier because we could just completely trade off chapters. And then mm. we would switch and like edit each other's stuff. And then I would get really in my head and be like, why'd you take out this joke that I wrote? Like get super again like kind of sensitive about it but it was actually not so bad because we had we were working off of an outline so we could just like truly be like I'll do one and you'll do two and then meet in the middle cool yeah that's cool I um Greg does his I don't produce any work because it's impossible but whenever I make good dinner any dinner he goes this is the best food of all time (laughs) Oh, 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 oh. Really great. Great. Shout out to Greg. Shout out to Greg. Um, of He's course, this is like he'll fly high. With any, I mention him so much in all this shit. It's bad. Um, okay, well, let's do some of these questions. I mean, I have more, but they there are some questions. Okay. Um, and one says it's from Greg, and I bet it's from him. Okay. Um. <laughs> What's the most ridiculous thing you've done to entertain yourself during this panini? <laughs> well, I shaved my boyfriend's head. <gasps> oh, that's yeah. Funny. On Instagram that's Live. Funny. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> was it fun? Have you cut his have you cut his hair since or was that like the one thing? No, no, it was one and done. Not that it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing i i've made some dog tiktoks <laughs> <laughs> i need to see there's, them. i yeah there's like a thing of like one, one of those uh time lapse type things like explaining how to like make a pancake for your dog <laughs> it's so <laughs> I love that. I've seen this TikTok though, and it's very good. It's like well produced, well directed, um, that's well written. Bad. <laughs> that's darker. <laughs> are all of you, are Ben and Rachel, are y'all on TikTok? No, I no. can't. I can't either. Yeah, I'm scared. It's I'm scared. Yeah. Here's the other thing: is I I pay for a separate app where I edit them and then I upload them into TikTok. Oh, you're but in isn't TikTok. Yeah, yeah. But isn't TikTok like known TikTok for its editing? Things? It's horrible. It's horrible. Oh. You got to use Splice. You have to use Splice. If you need a walkthrough, oh. let me know. I but um, I just sent there's the, I just sent Rachel this trend. Have you seen this trend of people like they'll be like sitting in their car and then and, and then the song kicks in and then it's them and they're like wearing like scarves on their heads and sunglasses and they're like Grooving. <laughs> well, I'm doing it with the dog, so I'll send it to you when it's ready. Oh, <sighs> oh boy. 
um, a good thing. To, I just getting into crafts, like different crafts, and I become obsessed. Like I was obsessed with making necklaces. I was obsessed with buying beads. Oh wait, I did make something. Wait, I think I have it. I was gonna. I couldn't get it around this turtleneck, but I have a beloved necklace that Rachel made me. I'm, I'm an amazing jeweler, but I also made this picture frame. Oh, I love and it. I was in like I was in like a general meeting, like just some Wait, in boring. Cool. I don't know. I it's I, isn't it amazing? I was I'm so talented, but I was in <laughs> like a meeting, you know, like a boring industry meeting where we were just like, and what do you do? And then I was like, I've gotten really into crafts. Like I made this, and the woman was like, <laughs> that's so bad. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> it's amazing. Can I, can I be honest with y'all? Yeah. <laughs> Always. We're all thinking it. My choker looks amazing, but it's so tight that it started hurting a few seconds ago. So I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I was like, why is my neck? I was like, why is my neck hurt? I was like, oh my god, this thing. Okay, and we have. Are you wearing it? Are you wearing a bathrobe? Yeah. <laughs> I'm at a hotel. What am I crazy? Wait, Rachel, what did you say to that comment? I was like, yeah, it is bad. <laughs> no, oh, no. I was what like, yeah, you're no, you're. you're not bad. Oh my, I don't think it is at all. I think it's, it's amazing. Did you follow yeah. a tutorial for that or was like that just from your heart? Um, I have a friend, uh, Sam Reese, who does this thing called Shitty Craft Club, where she just like it's really <laughs> a beautiful, beautiful thing where she just like inspires people to make bad crafts. And she had gotten really into like um, hot gluing beads. So I, I just like copied her but um after that meeting i did put the frame in a drawer so <laughs> bring it out bring it out bring it out <laughs> literally impossible to champ each so other with cool. four way delay it's beautiful i it's... made this too <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Rachel, well, that one has to go back in the drawer. That time is unbelievable. <laughs> no, don't put it away. I was, I was only it's open. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my gosh. It's beautiful. <laughs> What's your name? Uh -oh. what a time. She froze. Like she's having so much fun even though she's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was so fun. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll wait for her. This is the most amazing for each Oh no! I got it. I got she's so it. Oh. She's so embarrassed. I did get it. I did get it, yes. <laughs> oh, thank god. Um, okay. Let's talk about Someone, Priscilla would like advice for an aspiring female comedian in one word. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> one word. Oh, fuck. Um, but, yeah, one word is like, hard. Come, honey. There she is. <laughs> Who's Who's that? I had to go. I had to go. <laughs> yeah. We love. I got a perfect cup. picture you, of you, and you Rachel. Froze, you froze like this. Yeah, she'll show you. It was like. <laughs> it's so good. We're now we're now trying to give advice oh, to yeah, an doing... inspiring female comedian in <laughs> one word. <laughs> oh. I was gonna say like okay, I'm gonna say a word and I'm gonna expand upon it. But I was gonna say like gut, like trust your gut, like. If you go yeah. with the stuff that's like truly truest to you, that's your best way. Like, don't copy what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. That's their thing. You got to do you. You know what I mean? Oh, that's such a good one. That's really Thank good. You. Well, it doesn't really fit in the word, but you know what I mean. I, I know this is so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, 
I'm, I'm going to go. follow the prompt and say one word and not say anything else. Um, I, I think just, I know it's like everyone says it, but your truth, like your truth. This, mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I would say confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Thank you. Rachel <laughs> says crap. Yeah. What Be <laughs> saying, Rachel's screaming the word beads over and over again. Is she frozen again? <laughs> <laughs> beads! Beads! <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Um, I guess I feel like I would say that friend friends friendship uh yeah the advice, yeah. I, the advice i always give to like young writers who are like i, I want to work in late night or whatever is that i'm like keep just like keep being friends with other creators because like the networking part of working in entertainment is actually never like or at least in my experience it hasn't been like being friends with like a ceo or whatever or like a head of a studio <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> um it's like the connections that you make with the with your friends and the people that you come up with so like just yeah. <laughs> and, and just and pictured you like <laughs> i just pictured you like at lunch with like a man in like a big suit with like five yeah. people. <laughs> one of my favorite oh. Catherine quotes is that when you see someone in a suit you're like was he in the play yeah <laughs> So I will say, Catherine and we talk, Catherine and I talk a lot about like getting to finally do the stuff we've always dreamt of. And now when you're doing it, it like doesn't feel exciting anymore. But my dad sent us this screenshot on Amazon that said, like, people often buy together and it was our two books. And it was like, oh. that is a testament to what Rachel just said of we've been best friends for what? Like, 10 years and it's like we were nobody and now you can buy our books together which is so special mm -hmm. it's hard that to remember special. that that was such a nice moment i know it's really sweet and his my dad yeah. sent it on a chain to me and Catherine and Catherine's dad which is so sweet <laughs> oh my god so, i know but <laughs> so. now that's um, okay I don't know if this is my Greg, but I bet it is. But for the performers, now that we're emerging from the pandemic, how do you feel about being on stage and performing in front of audiences again? Excitement, dread? I'm pretty nervous. Really? Yeah, just because, like, I... I really haven't been around people at all. Like my partner and I did the type of choir where we like didn't like didn't go anywhere. Um, so like really being, I had a neighbor say hi to me by our mailboxes and I freaked out. So like I don't know <laughs> if I'm ready <laughs> for crowds of people yet. So I'm I'm genuinely nervous about it. Like I'm excited, but I, I know that it'll be a it'll be a thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. I did two outdoor shows in the past like six months. The first one was like super fun because it was just like so exciting to be there. And then the second one I was kind of upset after because I felt like I, I literally couldn't remember any of my jokes, even though like I tried to beforehand. It, it got me kind of bummed out. So I think it'll be like a rocky road to feeling like confident again. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I feel the same. I'm like very I dread is actually a pretty good word, like in terms mm -hmm. of what it feels like in my body. Like uh I've mm -hmm. gotten asked to do things a few times and um my body like it was like a nervous poop feeling of like, no, <laughs> no thank you. <laughs> also like I feel like I got comfortable <laughs> other things. Like I, I think a lot of like performers we all kind of like got used to doing other things during the quarantine like mm -hmm. I got really settled into like writing and doing things like that and it just felt more comfortable and so now I'm like why would I do something that made me feel nervous when I could just sit and keep eating and gaining weight until I'm <laughs> dead or a robot on stage she said I'm like <laughs> 
literally. Why do you need those? <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. This is a I also think it's going to be an interesting thing, like, if you're on, like, a classic stand-up show lineup type of thing of, like, balancing the fucking, like, quarantine humor, you know? Like, if everybody oh just goes up and does their bits about the last year, like, it's going to get old really fast. But then it also feels weird to joke about, like, about life I, before because it's not really the reality. Like, it's so weird. That's why yeah. I've made the amazing decision to write no new material and stick to the old stuff. <laughs> I love that strategy so much. It's I'm gonna pretend, I'm just going to actively pretend like I don't know what anyone's talking about when they talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, it's I also really like, use Zoom. But no, no. You use Zoom. Oh, I, like, I don't know if I've actually written a new joke. I think I've only like punctuated stuff like this and it <laughs> That is literally all I do in the core right now. I don't think I have jokes. Yeah. I just think I have camera movement. And when it comes to going live again, I will lose all of that power. And do it individually, get in all their <laughs> Each joke will take also like, like 20 minutes. At the Actually, beginning, I like love that. <laughs> it's not that fun to do a show to people in masks. This isn't me being like anti-mask by any means, yeah. but like okay, it's you like don't believe the virus. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that's weird. Like almost like disembodied laughter, like with like just masks is like a little bit strange. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's it's a little weird. weird. Um Okay, I thought we could answer a couple of these things. So throughout the book, there are these pages where a ton of the women answered the same group questions that are really fun. And I thought there we could talk about our answers to a couple. Um, so a song, album, movie, book, whatever, that an ex ruined for you. Like, so you can no longer read it or watch it or listen. Catherine, yours is in the book, I think, right? About what was the movie you were yeah, watching? But you oh, sorry, sorry. What's a song, album, movie, book that like an ex ruined for you? <sighs> oh, I don't know if I have an answer in the book. Um, oh, I oh, I had a really good one. Yeah. The book, but my, he, ru he ruined two things. Uh, we went to see Boyhood in theaters on this my birthday. This is birth in the day. book. <laughs> oh, it is, good. And my ex went to the bathroom, and when he came back, he, <laughs> this is not funny, he whispered in my ear, Robin Williams killed himself. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, or maybe he said God. died, and then I was like, how? And then he was like, like whispering, like, killed himself, like, in my ear. I'm like, <laughs> you just ruined my birthday, boyhood, and Robin Williams' oh, death. Oh, <laughs> Oh, and then oh and here's the kicker we then walked home over the williamsburg bridge and immediately did the ice bucket challenge in my shower okay <laughs> that is incredible <laughs> <laughs> they, ru oh, they ruined the ice bucket challenge for you that used to be my thing the ice bucket challenge <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bad. Amazing. Wow. Ladies. You guys have one? Rachel? I feel like I feel like I answered I think I said jazz to this, which is like Oh yes. Only because <laughs> only because like my college boyfriend like loved jazz in like a la la land kind of way where it was like <laughs> it was, like you won't believe what you can learn from jazz and like I don't know. I I think I like pretended to like it for a while and then um, have actually not thought about it for one second since. I think mine might be in the book as well. Um, it's Avatar. Um, we oh, started, yes, it is. Yeah, we yeah, started yeah. Watching it. <laughs> yeah, we started watching that and then it's long, so we didn't watch it in one sitting. And in between, like, we stopped watching it. And in that time, she broke up with me. Um, and then 
<laughs> did not finish it. So I don't know how Avatar ends. I don't know who wins. I don't, I don't, know, so I don't know what happens. I honestly have a hard time falling asleep thinking about <laughs> the blue aliens and whether or not they've won at the end of it. I don't think it's good. <laughs> um, got a Yeah, so that's is that Avatar for me. I dated this gift. one guy. Yeah, it is. You don't need to watch Avatar. I dated this one guy who uh, he like you know when a man gets like a slight cold and like thinks he's gonna die <laughs> um so i like i had to drive us we like went away for the weekend like a couple hours outside of la and i had to drive us home the whole time and he had to like lie down in the passenger seat no, no. <laughs> And we listened to James Taylor, and for a long time, it was just like, oh, this really hurt James Taylor for me. I mean, like, he didn't totally ruin James Taylor, but, like, it was unbelievable. He had, and he, he had, like, brought a pillow. So he had, like, a pillow from a bed on the passenger seat and was locking it down. No. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. Um, okay, and then another that I like in the book is... And sorry, I never remember what's in the book. It, it's all too jumbled it, in my so book. Much but, book. There's, there's so much. There's too much. I can't believe it. How much there is. <laughs> there's a lot. I don't know that that's like, exciting about buying a book. It's like there's so much in it. <laughs> no, I, I, got, like, I told you this. I was like, this should cost three million dollars. <laughs> Twenty nine ninety nine. Um. So, what's some slang that you made up that you think should be? used the thing is uh, Catherine is like kind of a slang influencer so like sometimes people <laughs> steal your stuff um but is there slang you like that you're like this should be prevalent okay there's um, one that hasn't caught on but i think i used i tried for a while to make um <laughs> absy dabsy happen like oh absy dabsy <laughs> <laughs> what is it what are you short wanna... for like absolutely, absy dabsy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to do I that. Like I could see That's myself using thing. that. I like, yeah, I like that. Okay, wait, guys, you don't say that. It's okay. It's over. No, no, I, I like absy really. dabsy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What about you guys? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you have one? I don't think I have a fun one. There's like there's a home video of me as a child um repeatedly calling a computer game a Peter game and <laughs> I've, I've really gone back to calling computers pewters in my life which I think is a pretty good <laughs> I think called pewter. I love that. I like that. That's so good. Pewter oh, game is cute. Pewter game. Um, <laughs> pewter game. I like that. Pewter game. Um, when I, I think in my early twenties, when I thought like feminism was reclaiming phrases, um, like <laughs> go in there with your, like go in there with your balls, you know, like get it, get, like, yeah, yeah. like strong. Yeah. I, I was like, well, why isn't there a, like a female equivalent? Um, and I was, I would say lab madge for Lady Majora. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Uh -huh. That's so good. That's <laughs> really, I'm impressed with that lab madge. You know, go in there and lab, go in there and lab madge. I still say it to myself. <laughs> I don't think it'll pick up, but my my partner and I use it. I love I, it. Can we be any more gay? I'm sorry. That was that's too it's gay so for the good. chat right now. Lab madge. <laughs> too gay for the chat. Sorry, that's a good one for chat. Too gay for the chat. <laughs> Um, Greg, as a little baby, I guess there's a story where someone, he didn't want to be looked at or bothered, and he goes, don't look me. <laughs> so we say, don't look me a lot. <laughs> don't look me. So don't look me. And a lot of time I like, I get really chatty right before bed. Does that happen to you guys? <laughs> and he like, doesn't want, <laughs> like, doesn't want. 
to be talked to and he will put a pillow up between us and go, don't look me. <laughs> don't That's look not me. really, don't look me. That's not really Very slang cute. though, but I don't know. Um, all right, well, we're coming to the end. This was no! literal heaven. I know. Wait, will four um, of us hang out for once? I know, seriously. Tian, do you think you'll, do you have, like a, Tian, do you think you'll come back to LA sometime soon? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, good. I think so. Okay, good. Okay, good. Um, so bring out. that lipstick and we'll share it together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, okay, so you can order notes from the bathroom line wherever. I think there, there's a book that, the, or there's a bookstore they're doing with San Antonio Book Festival, so do it from there. You can get Good Dogs on a Bad Day there. And the second one, it's Good Dogs, what's the second one called again? With Bad Haircut. <laughs> yeah, really? Um, with bad you can haircut. get God I Feel Modern tonight there. The fun thing about seeing God I Feel Modern tonight in a bookstore is Catherine Cohen is next to Leonard Cohen, and those are my favorite poets. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. That's so good. <laughs> And then Tien wrote for this amazing show, Work in Progress, that's shooting now, right? And that'll come out mm -hmm. this year. I think right? so, yeah. Yeah. They never um, tell us. Everyone needs to follow Friends Who Folk, which is Rachel's amazing duo. And that what is was the new song, song called? Hmm? What's the new song called? The one you just like did the really cool animated video for? Oh, oh uh, it's, I, we called it Horse Body. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. That is above and beyond my favorite musical comedy act in all of New York City. There's nothing better. I was just, Ned was in my dream last night and I was DMing him today. But the horse, wait, what's the part? Remember when I sang with y'all and I really liked that part? What was the part that yeah, I liked we, so much? I can't remember was, what part we had. Yeah, it was really high. Like Rachel has the most beautiful voice and she sings so wow. high in this one part. And I was like, <laughs> it's crazy. It's so I good. Look, look up. Go to Rachel's Instagram. They just made this animated video for this song, Horse Body. It's so good. Um, I know. It's I tried to like not. I'm trying not to look at social media, but then I miss out on like actual things I do want to see, like like horse body videos. I'll send that. I'll horse send. That. I need to remember that you're not on and like send you stuff. Um, Come on. Listen to. Listen to Seek Treatment, listen to Hysteria, listen to the new Story Pirates album. I'm just pointing to where you are for me, but I don't know where you are for each other. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else? <laughs> You're perfect. Brittany Solomon, who brought us all together. He's a freaking. Uh, oh, and yes. also Rachel Crafts. Yes! Abby Dabsy. Abby Dabsy. Thank you, Amy, for bringing us all together. Thank, Thank you, guys. Amy. The best. Thank you, everyone. Love y'all. Watch and ask questions. Bye.